Hi everyone, this is Matt St. John and want to do a quick uh, presentation regarding ship gear versus starship. Uh, so I'm sure you're aware, unfortunately, we are going to be sunsetting ship gear at the end of this year. So I just want to talk about your option of switching over to Starship. And this will just be a brief overview. Uh, of course, I'll put up contact information towards the end. So if you want to, feel free to reach out and we can schedule a more in-depth call and in-depth de uh, demo. All right. Uh, but before we jump in uh, real quick, a little bit about the technologies uh, that like I said, we'll, we'll talk about the differences between the programs. But with the technologies, we were founded in 1987. So we've been developing integrated shipping solutions for 35 years now. Uh, in that time span, we've actually had over 10,000 companies that have used our solutions to help streamline their day to day shipping activities. Uh, with Starship and today's demo, I'm going to show the integration with Sage 100. We do integrate with over a dozen other ERP systems, but with Sage, we've been working with them for over 22 years. We are a gold uh, master developer, and in Starship terms, we are a certified solution for carriers like UPS and FedEx. And what that means is our shipping labels are going to be delivered to already certified. Also, UPS and FedEx, they do have subsidy programs where you can qualify for free funding. So, of course, you can use that funding to purchase Starship. And the technologies, we do actually have over 40 employees now, and a lot of us are working remote, but the nice thing with at VTech is things like our support team is all in-house, development QA, so we're really not outsourcing anything. All right, so let's talk about Starship. Uh, now, as you see, multi-carrier multi, multi, uh, multi strategy. Uh, basically, what I like to call Starship is multi-carrier multi-mode. And really what that means is, as a shipper, I am actually going to be able to just use the Starship software so as you're used to with Shipgear, it's more of a middleware where we're connecting Sage to say UPS WorldShip, FedEx Ship Manager. But with Starship, you're actually gonna be able to process all your different type of shipments just through the Starship user interface. So multi-carrier, multi-mode, that means we're gonna be able to do parcel. And if, if you're even doing LTL type shipments, so we support both. Um, the other thing kind of difference between Shipgear and Starship is Starship's gonna bring in line level detail. You know, with Shipgear, we're only bringing in header information. So by bringing in that line level information, we can help automate uh, shipping processes like international shipments, LTL shipments. You know, if you're doing hazmat, same thing with the documents, you know, because we have that line level information, that information is automatically going to print on your, your shipping documents. Okay. Uh, also, things we support like drop shipment, blind drop shipments, and I'll, I'll show you that on our demo. Uh, we can even consolidate orders. You know, Starship could be set up where you, you can have it automatically show your shipper, hey, you have all these orders going to the same ship to, or maybe even by the same PO number. Live rate shopping. So that's the big thing. So again, because Starship is multi-carrier, multi-mode, you know, you might be using UPS, FedEx, LTL carriers. So what Starship's going to do inside the program, we're going to ping each of the carriers, and we do have integrations with over two dozen small parcel and LTL carriers, but we're going to ping them live real time and return your live contract rates. Okay? Uh, we could also, for small parcel, display published list rates if you want to see those, but you're also going to see other information like days in transit, ETAs. Uh, so again, just from one piece of software, you're going to be able to rate shop all the carriers, uh, set up Starship maybe to do best way shipping. And again, we'll talk about that uh, on the demo. Uh, matrix for better negotiations. So Starship also includes the dashboard program. So maybe we want someone in the front office to be able to run shipping reports or, you know, maybe see late deliveries or maybe what wasn't uh, delivered yet or again, voided shipments. Um, so we fully offer that program. It is included with Starship and it doesn't require any additional user seats or licenses. All right. The other thing we're going to talk about today is Starship Cloud. Uh, so with Starship Cloud, one of the nicest things, of course, you know, any IT is going to tell you, uh, hey, no more doing updates. I don't even have to spin up a server or have any other services running or software running in-house on your servers. Uh, so it's a nice thing with cloud where, hey, we're going to maintain it. We're going to take care of it. IT doesn't have to worry about anything. Also with cloud, we do offer different tiers based on shipping volumes. But with those tiers, you are going to gain access to unlimited users, um, all our carriers. So if you do a small parcel and LTL plan, automatically gain access to all the carriers we integrate with. Okay. Um, also all our e-commerce integrations. Starship does have integrations with e-commerce sites. 
Now, with those tiers, uh, what you're going to do if you move forward is we have a portal you can log into. You can pick your tier. But just know if you pick a tier, you're actually not locked into that tier. All right. So, you know, if you're seasonal, you know, maybe a couple months we need to be in a higher tier. And then, hey, for a few other months, we're going to have to go back into a lower tier. So you could always change tiers. You're not locked in to any of the tiers. And then, of course, with the Starship users, which, again, you gain unlimited access to, uh, you could also restrict them. So, for example, some clients, oh, yeah, I just want a dashboard user that can get into the dashboard program, not get into Starship to actually do uh, processing shipments. Right. So here's just a, a snapshot of some of the carriers we integrate with. Again, uh, live rate shopping, we'll, we'll talk about this in, in the demo, uh, but just know we, we do have integrations with over two dozen uh, small parcel and LTL carriers. Uh, here's just again a snapshot of the dashboard program. So as you see, we have some little matrix, uh, heat map, some reporting, uh, some graphs. Uh, but again, that's going to be included with Starship, and you'll be able to have as many users access the, the software as needed. Right. Now let's talk about kind of the downside of with ship gear being phased out. Um, so currently, uh, we're not putting in any more resources into ship gear again, unfortunately. I do appreciate you guys being clients, but unfortunately, we're just kind of time to move on to uh, just focusing on Starship. But with that being said, so with ship gear, no more bug fixes or enhancements. Uh, just also know, you know, if you are going to think about moving to Starship, uh, of course, we do have over 800 current ship gear customers who are looking to migrate. Um, so, you know, that that's kind of going to put a backlog into our um, in installation team's schedule. Uh, so kind of the sooner the better that you get signed up and get your appointment for install and training. Um, then also with ship gear, of course, you still would if you stay on, you know, still paying for the product. But again, you're not going to have access to any um, program fixes, bug fixes, and as you see, limited integration. Now, we also will be doing a promotional pricing uh, currently, so I'll, I'll show you that in a second, but just know that's actually going to go away, so th we're not going to offer that the second half of the year. And speaking of that promo, uh, as you see, uh, going to end May 31st, but if you'd like, with Starship Cloud, again, you can prepay uh, for uh, month to month or prepay for, as you see here, 12 to 23 months or even two years. Um, so if you do want to move forward with Starship Cloud and prepay for 12 to 23 months, you can receive a 25% uh, discount. Or if you want to uh, lock in two years, you can receive a 35% discount. And really to lock in the, these promos, all you have to do is pay for your onboarding services by the end of this month. Again, uh, May 31st, 23. And uh, again, just prepay for those services. You don't have to move with, forward with Starship right away. Uh, really, it's just going to lock that in. We're, we're going to send you a, a promo code or codes. And again, whenever you're ready to move forward with Starship, it could be as soon as you like, uh, as long as, you know, it's depending on our install team schedule or, hey, maybe you want to do it sometime next year. All right. So just know you just to lock it in. You just prepay for those onboarding services. Uh, contact information, as you see myself, my colleague Will in good hands with Will or myself. Uh, I'll put this screen back up at the end of the demo so you have it. But if you have any questions or want to do a deeper dive, uh, just feel free to reach out to one of us. All right. So let me escape out of here. So on my machine right now, here's the Starship program. So with Starship, almost like ship gear, you know, it's living outside of Sage. Kind of a nice thing with that, though, as a shipper, I can just work inside the Starship program. Uh, we do have options. We can pull by sales order, invoice, or by the customer record. And with the workflow, um, if you wanted to, uh, and with ship gear, you used to kind of have in that source uh, field where you type in or scan in the source document, either a sales order or invoice. So Starship offers the same thing. You know, here's my source field. I could scan in a barcoded sales order number, or whatever the source is going to be. I could type it in, or as you see down below, I can even manually look up and display those, in this case, sales orders. Uh, now, with this lookup, as a shipper, when I log in, I, I have the options. I can customize this. I could sort by any of these columns. I can move them around, add, remove them, even as you see, apply filters. But with this integration to Sage 100, this is a live integration. So, you know, as we're adding new sales orders or making changes to existing ones, just know Starship's going to be picking those up. Same thing with any of these columns or fields. These are just live Sage 100 fields. 
Now I did talk about consolidating orders. Um, so here's that option where I can select group related. And as you see what Starship is doing, it's showing me, hey, you have seven orders that are going to this address in East Troy. So uh, now I could quickly select all of them, or maybe I wanna grab a handful, I could do that. And then I can just click create shipment. Again, Starship is gonna take the ones I've selected, consolidate them into one single shipment. Other option, if you are typing or scanning, it could even be turned on that. Again, normally if I scan or type in a sales order number in this case, Starship would load it. Now, in this case, it's actually stopping and showing me, hey, I, I basically see you're trying to ship sales order 221, but I have all these other sales orders going to the same ship too. So again, I could quickly consolidate them and uh, put them into one shipment. But for the sake of this call, what we'll do here is we're just going to grab one single shipment. And I'll just grab this one. I'm going to click the truck icon. But as you're going to see now, what Starship is doing, it's bringing in all the shipping information, sales order information, customer information, line item information from Sage 100. And right, so again, with Starship, it's, it's a lot more information we can bring in. We're not just looking at header information. We can point to standard Sage fields. If you'd like, we could use user defined or custom fields. The other nice thing is, in this case, we're pulling by the sales order. It doesn't mean Starship is limited to just looking at sales order fields inside of Sage, okay? So we wanna use a different combination of fields from Sage, again, standard, user defined, but we wanna set this up so as a shipper, the less they have to click, type, touch, the better, all right? So our sender information, of course, is just gonna be your company information, or here's a scenario where Starship is set up where it knows this is a blind drop shipment, automatically has changed the, the company name for me. Sender information is just going to be your customer's uh, ship to data. Uh, Starship will do address validation. We do validate zip plus four and the residential commercial flag. We even have a built-in custom write back feature where, you know, maybe you want if the address gets changed due to validation to update that on the invoice, we can do that. Uh, same thing with like the carrier service. So because it's multi-carrier multi-mode, what we're going to do is use your ship via codes. That's what's going to tell Starship carrier service billing information. And here's an example where I have my system set up. Starship knows, hey, automatically change the billing type to third party. This drop down that it's automatically selected is a database, just like UPS WorldShip, where you could store your customer's address information and different carrier account numbers. All right, so that's one way we can automate third party type shipments. Uh, honestly, a lot of clients with the billing account. Oh, yeah, I have that in a field inside of Sage. Maybe it's on the customer maintenance. Maybe it lives on the sales order. But with Starship, you're going to see it's up to you. You know, of course, we're going to try to grab as much information from Sage as possible. But we also have databases for additional information to help streamline that process. Okay, uh, so even with the carrier, we could do reverse translations where, you know, maybe it comes in as UPS, but FedEx is less expensive. So we change it at time of shipment. Starship could update that ship via code. So transportation, shipment details are really just our shipping options. Um, of course, down in packaging, this is where usually the first spot a shipper goes to when we want to uh, build the shipping information. Okay, so again, we're going to try to automate all this information above as much as possible. But packaging is where they're going to actually see the items that were ordered. Uh, my system, I have it set up to show me what's available. You know, of course, if anything was back ordered, it's going to come into Starship back ordered. And in the, the packaging detail, we can add additional boxes using this icon. We have repeat box functions where if you need to add a, a whole bunch of different boxes, Boxes, you can do that um, so you can add boxes with the line item information it's simple drag and drop so a shipper can grab single items multiple items split quantities simply drag and drop to build the item box detail item box detail inside starships not a requirement so you don't have to put items in boxes um, so starships not going to yell at a shipper and say hey i don't have an item in that box i can't ship it okay uh, this packaging database is where you can set up and store your own set size boxes, bags, bales, uh, pallets, whatever it might be. We can also bring in the carrier supply boxes if you're using those. Um, so just another option if you wanted to have shippers select a package. Uh, the nice thing using the database Starship will populate the dimensions for them automatically. And then here's our weight. This can come from a scale. My system, I have the weight set up inside of Sage, so Starship's automatically calculating it. But the other nice thing here is dimensional weight. So Starship will run the carrier's dimensional calculation and always populate that correct dimensional weight. Also rate shop at that correct dimensional weight. And when we process it, it will go to the carrier at the correct dimensional weight. Okay. 
Um, so again, item box information, they can all build the packaging details inside of this area. After that, what most clients do is they simply scroll down, and then this is where we're gonna see that live rate shopping. Okay, so again, because it's multi-carrier, multi-mode, we're gonna ping each of the carriers that you have accounts with, that we have integrations with, and return information like business days, total days, ETA, list charge, contract charge, that's your live negotiator rate. Apply charges, you do what we write back into Sage as what we wanna charge the customer. Those can include plus or minus freight, um, freight rules. So if you wanna, hey, this customer receives a discount, um, hey, this certain item, let's add a flat rate of $3. So you can even have Starship calculate uh, different uh, fees or percentages, min maxes, um, really up to you. And then with the rating, if you want, Starship can get into doing things like best way where, hey, maybe you wanted to automatically select the least expensive carrier service. Uh, so maybe in this case that's set up and Starship would automatically select you know, UPS parcel, but you could also do it by the days in transit as well. Um, so maybe you don't want to do UPS parcel because in this case it's seven days. All right. So uh, different options, but in this case, I'll just run it with USPS. Um, now, really, after we do, if we're going to do live rate shopping, the, the shipper is just going to click ship and process. Oops, this one's yelling at me because here I have it set up where I require dimensions. So I'll just quickly add those. Light item information, that's another database. Again, as I was talking about earlier, that's where we can store uh, international information, LTL information. Uh, but now in this case, what I'm gonna do is just click, uh, simply go to ship and process to process the shipment. But just know we have drop downs, shortcuts, return labels, you can save shipments. Uh, again, with the return labels, maybe you needed a, a return label to go with your outbound shipment. But once we click ship and process live environments, what Starship's gonna do, it's just gonna automatically print out your shipping documents. And I'll just show you kind of example of some of them. Um, so here, of course, shipping labels will go to a thermal printer or printers. We can tell Starship where each of them get delivered to. Uh, followed by packing slips. This is just an example of one that I customized. Uh, and also, I put a rule on this packing slip. So as you see, hey, automatically just print this special packing list if it's a drop shipment, for example, for Tractor Supply Company, because they want their company, their information on the packing slip. All right, so different options. We can generate international documents. So here's a commercial invoice. You're going to see because we're bringing in that line item detail and have that, like in this case, Schedule B information, it's all going to populate on the document for the shipper. Here's another example. I customize this, like signed and dated. Uh, certificate of origins. Again, everything can be populated for the shipper. If you are doing LTL, here's an example of a pal, um, a bar, a pill lading form, excuse me. Again, everything's populated on the, on the document for the shipper. And then, of course, here, if you need a single barcoded pallet label, we could generate those too. But really, the shipper is going to click ship and process, documents print, Starship then just takes me back to the main screen. And what I'll do is quickly back inside of Sage. I'll show you that right back. Uh, so I'm going to go in SO invoice data entry. So as soon as the shipper clicks ship and process, what Starship's going to do, and if you're using ship gear and pulling by the sales order, this is going to be a big difference uh, for you. But what Starship does, it automatically creates the invoice. So here's SO invoice data entry, sales order 223, the one we just shipped. As you see, creates the invoice for me. One less thing the front office has to worry about doing. This example reverse translates the ship via code. Nice thing here is with tracking, that information goes into the correct Sage tracking tables. So I can see that information right here. I can even use Sage's item packing inquiry, see what we put in each of those boxes. If we did put items in each of the packages inside Starship. Uh, totals, this is where we can write back the freight amount plus or minus any freight rules. Uh, we can also do write back rules where if you, there's scenarios where you do not want us to override the freight, we don't have to. Um, and then in my system, these are just two user defined fields. So just an example of using that custom built in write back feature where I'm just telling Starship, yeah, I always want you to push back my freight cost or what the carrier is going to charge me. That way, before someone updates these invoices, uh, they can actually compare like this one. Oh, yeah, we're OK. We didn't short ourselves. But if you did, they'd be able to see that and then they could even manually change the freight amount if needed. Okay, so again, as you see, deeper integration uh, that Starship has compared to Shipgear with Sage 100. Um, and what I can even do real quick, again, I'll just jump into this dashboard program. I know we, we showed you some screenshots, but I'll, I'll quickly go in here. So again, here's that heat map, a uh, bunch of canned crystal reports if you want to run those. As you see, I'll select it here, um, even you know, history status. So again, anyone can access this that you like, uh, you know, can see all the uh, shipping information. 
And with Starship, we also include our e-notify program. Same thing if you are using it for ship gear. Uh, again, because Starship is bringing in line item detail, you can actually have Starship uh, put line item detail uh, on that information uh, or on those emails. So let me see if we have one here. Uh, so, for example, you know, you could show, hey, package one, this was what's in it, hyperlink tracking information, kicks them back to the carrier's website. But with these, you know, you can even do your company logo. Um, so you do have options um, with setting these up. You can even do emailing rules for each of the templates. You know, so maybe you want to do like a promo code. You can hyperlink fields, send them back to websites, but re really up to you on, um, you know, what you want to show the customer. Okay. And these can go out at any time. Uh, for example, here's the one. This is what I was looking for. This is the one I created for this shipment. So 223, as you see, our company information, Sage Fields, like PO, sales order. And then again, I'm giving them the item box detail with the hyperlink tracking information. You know, kick them back to the carrier's website. Uh, this could also just be package one, package two. And then here's an example where, hey, this one's hyperlinked. Kick them back to my website. All right, so let me bring up, uh, bring back up that uh, slide. Uh, I'm going to put up this information. So again, please feel free to reach out to myself or Will if you have any questions, want to schedule a follow-up call. Uh, but again, appreciate the time, everyone. Feel free to reach out and take care, and thanks for joining.